Some parents are proud and supportive of their children's success, but there are less scrupulous parents who take advantage of their kids and try to profit off them. With that in mind, here are some celebrities with the misfortune of having parents who attempted to extort them. 2020 was a terrible year for many reasons. One of the first tragedies was the death of basketball star Kobe Bryant, his teenage daughter Gianna, and seven others in a helicopter crash on January 26. The accident shook the world and left many praying for Bryant's widow, Vanessa. Unfortunately, there was more bad news to come for Vanessa. In December, she accused her mother, Sophia Lane, of extortion after Lane filed a $5 million lawsuit against her. According to Lane, Kobe had promised to always care for her before his death, in the lawsuit, she claimed that she had worked unpaid as both a personal assistant and a nanny for the family. Vanessa denied these accusations, telling the press that she herself was a stay-at-home mom to her children and that she had supported her mother for nearly two decades. She also claimed that in addition to the $5 million, her mother wanted a home and a Mercedes SUV. In 2017, the OC actress Misha Barton filed suit for $25 million against her mother-slash-manager, Nula. Like many situations with parents as managers, Misha had dealt with her mother manipulating and bullying her into silence for more than a decade after her big break. In 2009, the relationship and the pressures of fame led her to have a breakdown and spend four days in a psychiatric ward. When Misha took her mother to court, she claimed that Nula had bullied her, withheld earnings from her, and thrown her out of her own Beverly Hills mansion. Misha had originally entered into a verbal agreement with her mother and agreed to give her a standard 10% manager fee from her earnings, though court documents noted that Nula was secretly scheming to exploit her daughter's career. Back in 2013, a former associate of the Barton family spoke to People magazine about Nula and Misha's relationship. The associate claimed that Nula called the shots, even though Misha paid all the bills. Nula pushed her daughter to buy a luxury home for the family even though she couldn't afford it, and it eventually went into foreclosure. At the time, Misha had defended her mother, but the situation clearly became too difficult for her to accept by the time of the lawsuit. We brought this action on behalf of our client Misha Barton against her mother and former talent manager Nula Barton um, so that Misha can get closure, can move on with her career. In 2011, Leighton Meester sued her mother Constance for misusing a $7,500 monthly stipend on herself instead of on Leighton's brother Lex's medical expenses. In addition to taking money from her daughter and ignoring her sick son, Constance threatened to sue Leighton for $3 million if she didn't raise the stipend. These were far from Constance's first legal troubles. At the time of Leighton's birth, she was hit with a 10-year prison sentence for bringing illegal substances into the United States from Jamaica while she was pregnant. During the first three months of Leighton's life, she and Constance lived in a halfway home before Constance went to prison. Leighton became a huge star thanks to the success of Gossip Girl, and she made sure to care for her mom and brother, who was recovering from brain surgery. After learning that her mother was using the money on herself, Leighton cut her off and filed a lawsuit when Constance claimed that Leighton had promised her that she would pay $10,000 a month for the rest of her life. The court ruled in Leighton's favor, but she failed to also win custody of her brother. The story of Corey Feldman is equal parts tragic and disturbing. As a young actor in the 80s, he had a resume on par with some of the greatest child stars of all time, but he also faced abuse, drug addiction, and a myriad of other horrors before reaching adulthood. During his teen years, he sued and was emancipated from his parents, but as he revealed to ABC News in 2011, his father Bob made him pay him $40,000 following the trial, claiming that spending time with him cost him money that he would have otherwise earned with his business. Now, if you've got parents that are already not responsible enough to care about how many hours the kids got to work, what makes you think they're going to do the right thing when it comes to getting the money? When Feldman emancipated himself, the $1 million he made up to that point in his career had already been spent by his parents. Both of his parents have denied many of the accusations levied at them by their son, going so far as to refer to him as a scam artist throughout the years. While the emancipation was a victory for Feldman, it couldn't bring him total peace, as he continued to struggle with addiction and mental health issues even after he was granted his independence. When Jenna Malone was only 10, she got into acting to help with her family's financial struggles. By the time she was 15, she'd made a name for herself with a successful film career and also emancipated herself from her mother, whom she alleged had mismanaged her earnings and left them in a state of poverty. Malone grew up without knowing her father, who had gotten her mother Debbie pregnant while married to another woman. 
Jenna was raised by Debbie and her girlfriend and didn't even meet her father until she was in her teens. Though despite this and the poverty they faced, she looks back fondly on her childhood. As Jenna's acting career took off, her mother looked after her finances, or at least that's what she believed was happening. As it turns out, Debbie failed to keep the money that Jenna was earning. Jenna ended up successfully winning legal emancipation from her mother as she accused her of squandering her money on excessive spending and mismanagement. Since then, Jenna has continued to have a steadily successful acting career. In May of 2000, a then 17-year-old Leanne Rimes sued her former manager Lyle Walker and her father Wilbur Rimes for stealing at least $7 million over the course of five years. For their part, the two men sought to keep Rimes attached to Curb Records based on a contract that Leanne had signed when she was only 12. While her parents and managers supported her early in her career, tension had grown between the time of her 1996 debut album and when she filed her lawsuit, as she desired to take control of her future. Her father responded by countersuing. When asked about the situation, the country star told ABC News, I definitely believe that the love for money is the root of all evil because it changes people. In 2001, Rhymes was in a legal battle with another associate, her former bodyguard and trainer, Robert Lavetta, who was arrested and charged with two counts of extortion. As it turned out, he'd taken personal photos and items and threatened Rhymes' camp to give him $2 million in severance as well as a Ferrari, or else he would send the items to the tabloids. Despite all these troubles, Rhymes was ultimately able to make peace with her father, whom she reunited with in 2002 as she wanted him to attend her wedding. In 2012, Modern Family's Ariel Winter was emancipated from her mother, Crystal Workman, at the age of 14. The dispute wasn't about money, but just freedom. Winter claimed that she'd been physically and emotionally abused by her mother and sexualized at an early age. She also claimed that her mother didn't allow her to interact with many other people. Workman has denied these accusations, but these weren't the only accusations levied at her. According to Sharon Sachs, Winter's on-set teacher during her time on Modern Family, Sachs would order multiple lunches so that Winter could eat more, as her mother kept her diet very restricted. Sachs also believed that Winter was sleep-deprived, as her mother kept her out for late parties and engagements, despite the early call time for shooting the show. I think she craves attention, and if it means throwing your mother under the bus and hurting her and breaking her heart, she's going to do it. Winter was ultimately successful in her emancipation suit, and she then moved in with her older sister, actress Chanel Workman, who had also left their mother for similar reasons. Crystal and her legal team accused Chanel of having sought access to Ariel's bank account, which was proven to be false based on court records. During this time, Winter said that she reconnected with her father and caught up on the childhood that she didn't have while she was focusing on acting and work. Billy Unger, also credited as William Brent, is yet another example of a child coerced by his parents into giving them power over his finances. In 2015, he sued his father William for multiple infractions, including breach of contract, negligent misrepresentation, and fraud. Attempts to settle the dispute out of court were unsuccessful. Back in October 2013, a year and a half after Billy got his big break on the Disney Channel show Lab Rats, he and his dad entered into an oral agreement to make William his son's talent manager and business and financial advisor. William would reportedly go on to use Billy's earnings to pay his girlfriend's rent, while also hiking up the percentage he took as his agent. While the average commission for a Hollywood agent in Hollywood is between 10 and 20 percent, William was taking a third of his son's salary. Billy claimed that his father mishandled $400,000 of his money and spent over $120,000 in order to impress his girlfriend. The suit also alleged that William took out a $1 million life insurance policy on his son, with William as the sole beneficiary. For his part, William claimed that he loved his son and that the lawsuit was the result of a, quote, manipulative negative force in Billy's life. Step-parents can be tough to deal with, especially if the biological parent is still in the picture and if fame and fortune are also in the mix. With that in mind, in 2013, Ellen Pearson, stepmother of Kim, Chloe, Courtney, and Rob Kardashian, sued her estranged stepchildren for defamation and emotional distress. At the time, the Kardashians had accused Pearson of exposing their late father Robert's personal belongings and private documents to the media. Pearson had licensed portions of her late husband's diaries and photos to Bauer Publishing, the owner of Life and & Style and In Touch magazines. In Touch soon published a story titled The Secret Kardashian Diaries. Pearson also accused Kris Jenner of physically abusing her kids during their childhood. The Kardashian family contended that the diaries and photos belonged to them as part of Robert's will. 
but Pearson told Radar Online that she had around 500 photos that the Kardashian family never wanted until they began to be published. In 2010, Pearson declared Chapter 7 bankruptcy and was required to give up all her properties that were originally owned by her husband. This strengthened the Kardashians' case, as they claimed that if Pearson had truly owned the items, she would have defrauded the court by not disclosing their existence. By 2014, the case was settled, with the materials returning to the Kardashian family. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that Murray Wilson is one of the most toxic fathers in the history of music. His sons Brian, Dennis, and Carl were three of the founding members of the Beach Boys, who recorded some of the most iconic music of their generation. Brian Wilson in particular has lived a tough life, as he suffered psychological and physical abuse at the hands of his father. Peter Ames Carlin's book, Catch a Wave, goes into detail about Murray serving as the band's manager. After learning that Brian and the other boys had spent money meant for an emergency while Murray and his wife were on vacation, Murray threw Brian against a wall, stopping only at Brian's pleading to listen to them play. After the performance, Murray decided that he was the band's manager. There were plenty of other instances of Murray's abuse. In one upsetting episode, he made Brian defecate on a newspaper like a dog in front of his mother. And in 1969, he sold the catalog of Brian's hit songs to A&M Records for $700,000. As Wilson told the Chicago Tribune in 1991, my own father had robbed me of my self-esteem. Did you live in fear of your father? Yeah. yeah. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.